Hello everybody. I decided to do a few videos of the um, equipment that I've got. Various modifications, fixes, hacks, video reviews of games, hardware, software and various other stuff. Um, first thing I'll probably do today is the uh, tap player for the 64, Vic 20, PET, anything Commodore related really. 8-bit wise anyway, which is this bit of kit here. I've recycled the box that came with the PET. It had a um, printer a printer conversion type affair. Never going to use it in a million years. So I pinched the box and um, fitted the Arduino inside there. A printed circuit board that I made up. Soldered it all up, put the screen on, a few buttons, and away you go. While we're chatting, it might as well be uh, loading so you can see how long it takes. It's exactly the same as the original 1531, was it? Cassette player by Commodore. Back in my youth. Play. Play. Oh, I've got to find it now. It's recorded. Right. Do pit stop. I was going to do parallel extra. I've been looking at it all morning, so we'll do do pit stop instead. Uh, the loading times are exactly the same as the cassette deck. The only difference is, of course, that the cassette deck pit stop two found. Um, the cassette deck can give you loading problems, or rather, cassettes can because they're getting very old now, and they well, they were never meant to last this long. Same with disk drives. Disk drives are failing now. Discs are failing. Head alignment problems. So on and so forth. So what alternatives do we have on the 64? Well, quite a few actually. It's pretty good, the 64. It's got the music. Oh yeah. Yeah, I spent many hours listening to this sort of stuff. Anyway, the 64 is pretty well catered for when it comes to loading um, tools, let's say. You've obviously got the cassette decks, the disk drives, as I said earlier, but they're not as reliable as they once were. Uh, they weren't always that reliable when they were new, in truth. But you've got things like the 1541 Ultimate, which gives you the uh, a cartridge emulator so you can run your own CRT files. You just stick them on the SD card. The same with the uh, D64 images which can also be dragged and dropped onto the earth with a um, PC or a Mac. Drop the files on. As long as you've got the cable in, uh, into the disk drive port and powered up, you can use it as a disk drive. It works just as quick as a real disk drive, or just as slow as the case may be. Uh, but it's very reliable. You should have no problems. The only downside is it's quite expensive. Not always that easy to find. They're made in batches. Sometimes the batches are available, sometimes they're not. But if you search in Google, you'll be able to find uh, the current supply, whoever that is. It's a few years ago since I bought that. That is a Model 1. There's also a Model 2 now. But anyway, back to my original um, reason for doing the video. Uh, I, like I say, I will be doing a series of videos on various stuff, whether it be the ST. Generally it will be Commodore stuff, Amiga, C64s, 128s. Don't have a Vic, but I suspect I'll have one very shortly. Also the PET, which didn't work when I bought it. It spent <laughs> probably three years getting this going. But in truth, I've probably spent a month. It now works and runs, but it's been a, a hook old struggle all the way. This C64, uh, did this work? Yeah, this worked fine. This one did not when I bought it. Uh, this had a black screen, as I remember. Uh, and then after changing whatever it was, CIA is probably PLA. Uh, might have even been the SID as well. Now a lot of people say that the SID won't stop the 64 booting. I have had the SID stop the 64 booting. But anyway. So that's that, that works now. 
Um, so I'll be doing videos of all these and how they work, how they fit, how I plug them in. But I just thought I'd search show now quite quickly. The, the um, Arduino based 18 Mega 328 uh, tap player. So you can copy your tap images that are used obviously in emulators generally speaking. You can copy them onto a, an SD card. In, on, in this case goes in there. I will do another video where I take it apart and show it working. I have some pictures somewhere of building it I think. I'm not sure I'll have to look. Um, you get yourself an 18 mega uh, a printed circuit, a, bird, a breadboard, bed breadboard, build it up, wire all the components in. There's a dozen or so wires to wire up. It is quite simple. The cable is from an old 1531 cassette deck. Is it 1530, 1531? Whichever. Um, it's from original Commodore cassette deck. I just cut, no I didn't, unsoldered it, took it off and soldered it directly onto my board. So I didn't have to mess about making or ordering the correct um, port for the back of the CP4. So, you know, I just pinched one. I've got loads of cassette decks kicking about. Which is annoying really because I'd spent the whole morning getting the cassette deck working. And then decided I couldn't be bothered. And I built that. But there you go. Like I say, so while we've been speaking it's run, it's working. Doesn't make any noise. But it works perfectly. Um, I will, go, I will put on a video with a selection of C64 games which are my favourites from my youth a long time ago and I will, um, I will do a video review of a few games, the better games of the 64 in my opinion, I mean let's face it there are thousands of them so I can't give you uh, an ultimate top 10 or 100 or whatever, there's thousands of games for the 64, it really is the machine of the 80s. Yeah, I'll stick by that. It's the machine of the 80s, really. Until the Amiga came along. But there we go. But if you want more information on the tap player, you can do it yourself. You can build it yourself. It will take you, depending on how good you are at soldering, it's not difficult, it's quite easy. It will take you, let's say, a morning or an afternoon. It's not that big a deal. Um, I'll provide a link where to get the kit from on amibay.com. There's a chap on there who's making kits up in a bag, which is this one. Uh, I ordered the kit, and then when I had nothing to do one weekend, I, I built one anyway. So I had all the parts kicking about. Um, so that's it really. I won't go into any details of pulling it apart, because I just can't be bothered really to take it all apart. But I will put a video up showing them how I built it, where to soldier and how to do things. Quite an interesting little project. I'll keep you quiet for an hour or two. Um, I think that'll do for now. Thank you very much.